Hello everybody, I'm Quentin, and I just wanted to give a little completely unsolicited recommendation here for a bit of software. Um, I have decided to finally rip all of my CDs. I've been keeping them as a hard copy sort of archive for a long time, but they're just taking up too much shelf space and it's it's been a long time since I've put one into a CD player. Um, I could have converted them to MP3s a long time ago, but I was quite glad that I hadn't recently when uh, iTunes, I think it was probably iTunes Music, screwed up my entire MP3 collection and put the wrong metadata in every track. Um, so uh, you can imagine trying to make playlists and things when about half of your uh, tracks are actually not what they claim to be. You do get some very interesting playlists. Anyway, what I decided to do was create a lossless copy of all of my CDs. Now there are various ways you can do this. Uh, you can just essentially copy the raw data that's on the CD, but the problem with that is that it doesn't have any metadata in it. It doesn't know anything about uh, the album and the track names and the composer and so on. Um, so what you want is a format that is lossless, uh, so you have the full high quality version from your CDs, because this is a kind of archival process but one where you can add all of that metadata. And there are a couple of ones that are widely used for this. One is the Apple lossless codec, uh, which is perfectly good, but a bit restricted to Apple products. Um, the other is FLAC, F-L-A-C, which is an open protocol, and that's what I decided to go for, even though it isn't in general supported by Apple products, which is what I use. And the reason for that is I thought, if I have all of my files as FLAX, I can then um, convert them in future to MP3s at whatever resolution I want. I can keep the FLAX as a kind of master archive copy, uh, and I can produce the MP3s for actually playing on most of the equipment I want to play them on, or um, in fact, uh, AACs or whatever is the current format. Um, so anyway, what did I use to do this? Well, you can use iTunes, um, but iTunes does have a lot of limitations, and in particular, it, it won't produce flax. Um, there are various free options that you can use, but I ended up going with a, a program called DB Power Amp, uh, which I, uh, is by a company called Illustrate. If I just search here, you can find it, DB Power Amp. And... One thing about DB Power Amp is there is a free version, but essentially you want to pay for this, uh, at least if you're ripping lots of CDs like I am. And it's not completely cheap. Um, you can get it, I think, for uh, Windows and for the Mac, and it's basically £31 for a single seat. You can get a family pack for £54. So that would be about ooh, uh, 40 or $50 for this, to give you an idea. But I think it is worthwhile, and let me show you why here. So firstly, it does a variety of things beyond CD ripping uh, and batch converter. For example, if I want to go and convert large numbers of FLAC files into MP3s, this is the thing I would use. However, um, I want the CD ripper here, and this does have a rather kind of quaint graphic design. But I have an external uh, USB CD drive, and I'm just going to stick a CD in here. And... It spins up for a moment, and then power amp will start thinking. Okay, and what you can see is that uh, it's found some album art for it, it's found the album name, it's various composers, it's found the date, uh, and it's found all of the track names and uh, all, of the, all of the artists associated with that. And what's cool about this is that it's done it actually by going and looking at several uh, potential online sources of this metadata. And this is very handy because not all of them are perfect, or sometimes you find that one particular site has only seen this album in German before, I've had this, and so you want to have a look and see if any of the other sites have got it here. So here we can see the, in this case, four different services that it's consulted to try and match this album, and the, um, the metadata that it's found from each one, and it's combined them into uh, this here, but it's highlighted the places where they're slightly different. So, for example, if for my genre here I didn't want stage and screen, but I want soundtrack, well, the GD3 database headed to soundtrack, I can just click one of these bits of metadata. And so it's showing me in black, basically, the, um, the things that it is using in the metadata. 
when I've got it all as I like it, I can just say OK. And um, down here, I've set up a profile. You can create profiles choosing what, how you want to rip it into what format, where you want to rip it to, and so on. And in my case, I'm creating flax on my Lassie drive. And, uh, and so um, I have a profile set for that. Uh, you, and then I can just click rip. And it goes away and it does this uh, really quite quickly. This disk is just spinning up here and starts reading the first track. And it does all sorts of clever stuff here of multi-pass reading if it has any problems reading it. And after it has, uh, after it's ripped the the track, it will compare um, a checksum of the track with the checksum that other people have also come up with when recording this CD. So it can test whether or not it's got a good copy of it. And it will, um, so we can see here, going through the track reasonably fast. And uh, when it's finished here, we will see there's the, um, the CRC, the cyclic redundancy check, the checksum basically for this disk. And it tells me that that matches. It's very confident. 158 is very confident that that is a completely accurate copy. And if it doesn't match, you, can, you have all sorts of options as to what you can do. In my case, I have had it on quite a few of my disks, returned some errors there, and I've just taken the disks out, cleaned them, and made sure they're firmly seated in the CD and put them back, and then gone ahead and re-ripped those tracks again, and, uh, and that's generally worked fine. So this is a great way of getting the metadata you want very quickly, as checked by several other people, getting the tracks recorded reliably as you want, um, and putting those all into a directory structure with good quality metadata on it. And for me, this is a really good way of archiving my CDs. So I have no, so I have no relationship with the publishers other than being a happy customer, um, but I think this has actually been worthwhile. I've been ripping two or 300 CDs and, um, and I've been very grateful that the process of doing so has been as quick and easy as this. I have it set so that when the, uh, the disc finishes, it ejects. So I know um, that it's all completed and I just then stick in the next disc and, uh, and click rip and off I go again. Anyway, hope that's useful to someone. Uh, DB PowerAmp, uh, very pleased I decided to splash out on it.